blue face, baby. Yeah, hey. Bust down, dark down. I wanna see you bust down. Bust down, Tatiana. Bust down, Tatiana. I wanna see you bust down. Pick it up. Now break that shit down. Break it down. Speed it up. Now slow that shit down on the gang. Slow it down. Bust it. Bust down. Bust down. Bust it. Bust it. Bust down on the gang. Oh. Bust down, Dr. Yana. Bust down, Dr. Yana. I wanna see you bust down. Pick it up, not break that shit down. Break it down. Speed it up, not slow that shit down on the gang. Slow it down, bust it. Bust it down, bust it. Bust it. Bust down on the gang. Oh. Blueface, baby. Yeah. I'm everybody's fantasy. Yee! You know it's Friday. I got the forest vibes in me. Uh, what is good? It's Friday and we're feeling good. Uh, uh. <laughs> what is cracking? Never lacking. Supreme edition on my chest. Who you asking? Uh, new dream. Let's go. What's cracking? That's, that's the way to start off a podcast, man. That's how we do. That's an intro. What is good, guys? Happy fucking Friday. It's your boy, MJ. We got Steven, Desiree, of course, the fucking crew, the fammy, fammy on deck. Uh, how you guys doing, bro? Good, man. Pretty good, man. How about you? I'm excited. I look how forward. This is, uh, this is These are my weekends, man. Um, Thursdays are my Friday, and then, you know, Fridays are my Saturdays, and I go hard on my Saturdays, which are my Fridays, if you know what I mean, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that high yet, um, but yeah, guys. <laughs> yet yeah, yeah is the key word. <laughs> Before we get started, if, uh, shout out to everyone in the comments who's here early. Uh, yeah. shout out to all the viewers, people who've been following us and support us. Big shout out to the supporters. Uh, if you want to support this channel in any way, do me a huge solid and fucking subscribe to the channel, man. Just click that button, hit the notification bell. That way you're on top of all our guests, uh, all our sessions that we do here on Unfiltered Reptiles Podcast. Um, Shout out to the fucking sponsor, one and only, Cold Blooded Cafe, freshest of the freshest. You know what I mean? You can't get better than these rodents, I'm telling you. $30 flat rate shipping. Uh, the guest that we are going to bring on could tell you all about that because he fucking feeds all his animals fucking, you know, Cold Blooded Cafe rodents. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know? So, uh, but yeah, guys, um, sh- been getting a lot of great feedback, man. I'm telling you, these, these last uh, few sessions we've had are, are just been fucking through the roof man i think ever since desiree has, has gotten involved it's just it's just been off i mean is has it been desiree i don't i don't know probably, probably, probably desiree she would take credit for it at least i mean i did get us kevin and brian last time that last week already semantics yeah yeah, yeah. my it's days weird. are all flowing together anyway. <laughs> i don't leave my house <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> corona <laughs> In, in times like this, I th- feel like people like us who don't leave the house normally are fucking fine. I, I'm doing great. I'm not. Really, it's just, I, I, like am, I just don't know what day it is anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and who I am. Um, yeah. Guys, a little bit about this guest, man. I'm super stoked. Let's see. So these, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not too, you know, Robbie's not somebody who I've met before. Um, Steven's, Steven's met him. Have you met him before, Desiree? Yeah. So actually, I can take this intro. Um <laughs> cool. No, no, this is real. So Forrest and I, uh, this is where we got started. Um, was was with Robbie. Uh Forrest always kept snakes and bread rodents and um did all that throughout our travels. And then we finally settled down in Florida. This was like 2010 or so. Um, we started volunteering out at Glades Herp, uh, so with Robbie, and that's pretty much where we got our start in this this big game. Um, like publicly or whatever but uh yeah we go way back with robbie and learned crocodile stuff through him venomous stuff we even took care of the rodents they were breeding there on the property so let's see what the fuck he has to say yeah hi hey (laughs) steven what what do you mean we're live (laughs) <laughs> it's Max! Damn. And there comes the rain. <laughs> hey, Steven. That was just for you, baby. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
turning red at the face, bro. Hey, look at him. Look at him, dude. He is so... Uh, dude, right now, he's got that little stiffy going, too. <laughs> Do not stand up, Steven. Do not stand up. He's going wow. to hit the webcam. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! If you guys, if you guys, come, this is this is what we started. As soon as, uh, as soon as we got Robbie into the fucking live chat, it, it was like this right off the bat. And here we are, guys, in the fest. We have fucking Robbie, Robbie Keezy of Swamp Brothers, man. What's up, Robbie? What's happening, man? What's happening, guys? Is it raining oh. outside right now? It actually is raining. It's just starting. Where in Florida are you at? We're in Bushnell, Florida. We're about an uh, hour north of Tampa, hour south of uh, or uh, Ocala, and an hour northwest of Orlando. Okay. Now, for the people who, for whatever reason, fucking have no idea as far as, you know, what it is you're involved with animal-wise, can you just tell us the name of the, uh, the zoo you run and all that stuff and just kind of a little bit what you do? Right now, what we're doing is, we're, Stephen and I have the farm, and we've been working out there. We're doing all the crocodiles and a lot of snakes still, and we're getting ready to open a park, and so we're taking care of all the animals till we do that. And it's just daily fun on the farm, you know. We're, we're posting on uh, Get Swamped on Instagram, on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter on Get Swamped, and... Uh, Anything you looked it up, it's Get Swamped. Our YouTube is Get Swamped, and there's a lot of cool things there. You know, we, post, we try to post every day, but with this corona bullshit, and Steven hasn't been out for a while, so, you know, just me and my son and whoever stops by. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure it seems like you're making the best of what you can do right now, so I'm sure that's all you can do. So. That's, that's it, bro. That's all you can do, man. That's yeah. it. So, guys, real quick, all the information that um, Robbie just said is in the description below. So make sure you give him a follow on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel um, and, and all that good stuff. This guy, no matter what, this his content, your content is fucking amazing. When, you know, anytime you're posting, it's super catchy. Um, and it's fucking, I mean, it's unreal. I mean, shit, I could count on one hand. I mean, people I know that could are doing what you're doing with these kind of animals. I could probably count on two fingers, to be honest. It's, it's fucking it's you know what? Our stuff is real. I don't care about being somebody I'm not. What you see, ask Des, man. What you see is what you get. Hell yeah. You know, is that, that's that's us 100%. Steven's the same way. Des knows. Everybody's like, dude, is Steven really like that? And Des, what do you say? <laughs> you're about your brother. You need to, not me. You need to yeah. tell everyone who you're talking yeah. to. Not Cook. Yeah, Steve, Steve, Steve and my brother. Yeah, there's my brother. So there's, yeah. there's two so of them, Steve right? Steve and Kezi, too. Um, so he's back down there now? Or What's that? Where is he? Is he there or? Yeah, yeah. He lives in Orlando, but they're under lockdown. His wife's a doctor. So she's got to be working nonstop. So he's got the kids, and awesome. he's got to do that. Okay. You know, his wife's a, a really big do big time doctor at uh, the Children's Hospital here in Orlando. So she's super busy with all this stuff going around. Hell yeah. yeah. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the early days, man. Okay. So you know, you Desiree, you stated that. Fucking! It started it off with you and Forrest with with Robbie. Talk a little bit more about that. Let's let's talk about uh how you guys cross path, how you guys were able to cross path with Robbie and, and how that shit built. Is this mm -hmm. me you hear me? Can you hear that? Did you hear anything? Des, do you hear? Yeah, I can hear it. Was the question for me? Yeah, Desiree. No. Jesus, are you okay over there? <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, so Forrest and I, I don't even remember how the fuck we met Robbie. Um, do you? I just know we ended up um, like five minutes. Cody, away. Cody had, um, what's his name from Nevada get a hold of me. Nevada. And then when you guys were in Las Vegas at Ken's, and Ken got a hold of me and said, listen, I got this guy that wants to come down and, um, hang out with you guys and volunteer at your place. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's what. And I then <clears throat> with Rigo, Cody, and you guys. Yeah, that was the first time. I remember that now. Yeah, and that was that, that was, was cool as shit. What yeah. year was this? That's probably oh like god, two thousand ten. Yeah, okay. ten is when we moved there. Really okay, so it was nine. Yeah, I was like eight or nine. Maybe it was when we yeah. did they on a show in '08 because we all came down for that. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you guys all moved down. Yep. And we got back. You had the three the three damn stooges living together, Cody, Forrest, yeah. and Rigo. Oh my god. <laughs> that that was a nightmare, dude. Oh my god. I can only imagine I can only imagine a young Cody, a young Forrest, and fucking Desiree, young ass Desiree all together under one household. What and, and you got Forrest who's got hair. He thinks he's like in the Beatles or something. Yeah, but he had his long ass hair. <laughs> so well, it was he posted funky. that picture uh, recently. It's, it's hilarious. It was so hilarious. I'm like, dude, you got to do something with that hair. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what? It's cool, dude. <laughs> I was like, dude, really, it's not. <laughs> so. What was what sort of work was Forrest doing for you off right off the bat, Robbie? Um, Forrest really wanted to get into doing snakes and all, and dude, we threw him right in, man, right in, and he was great. He was Forrest is a, a lot like myself, total ADHD, and <laughs> you you walk in a room and he's got oh. ten things going at the same time. <laughs> and it's like Forrest, what the hell? <laughs> but I, I had no room to talk because uh, I'm the same. I was the same way in the hot room. I mean, I'd have King Cobras out in this area, the Mambas over here. Uh, you know, it's it's just a total ADHD thing, and I think that's it. Forrest and I shared that, and that's we got along great. <laughs> yeah, we worked one of the hot room buildings. And every morning, I got to go feed all the gators with his brother, Steven. Yeah. So I learned how to do all that. We went and fed him chuck or, or no, lots of rats and then like lots of random meats from the grocery stores. Oh, yeah. We buried and sent you guys to the chicken farm to get all the dead chickens. And <laughs> <laughs> that was the highlight of my day. To go <laughs> Watching Stephen puke. Yeah. <laughs> he was such a busy for a while. <laughs> he still is. <laughs> Are you kidding? He would jump so bad, like so far back, and he'd be like, "Dad, no, you're getting too close." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, "Hey, uh, Robbie, let me ask you." So, around that time, that's kind of around the time you had the TV series, uh, yeah. 2010, 2011, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right at the, right at the end when they were there, and then uh, they, where'd you guys move to, like? St. Cloud or somewhere like that, Des, and then you guys moved back over here. Oh, fuck. Um, it was it was Sanford, then Bushnell, then uh, Eustis. Okay, like yeah. Terry. Yeah, that's right. And then you guys moved over to Bushnell. You got the trailer over there. Yeah, and, and that's got where it. the intro for the TV show was at, and we, we had those big pythons in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did the confiscation of these twenty something huge pythons. This idiot was like had them in a trailer in Louisiana, and we couldn't film that there because it was a open investigation. And this guy, it was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen in my life. He had these pythons in this house that was a trailer and gutted. And he had these cages, and he had loose, loose snakes all in there. And his house, he made out of, like, plywood. Him and his girlfriend lived in there. And they used to, like, defecate in Walmart bags and just throw it out in the yard. And they used to get free puppies and kittens from the newspaper. And that's what they would feed their snakes. And we walked in this place. We were going to film us going to get this stuff. And I, no way. 
the police were like, look, it's an open investigation. I don't think you want to put this on TV. Yeah. So we had to do a reenactment of it down here, and we just tamed it way down because what these snakes were living in was disgusting, and there was no way I was going to do that. But we do, it, we, it was the just, just of it, you know, someone keeping a bunch of snakes, and they couldn't do it anymore. In Florida, it was perfect because they just passed those laws where you had to have permits for all that stuff, and people didn't want to get those permits. So it, it fit perfect because it gave it an out in a way, you know, we tried to, we showed people that you could contact people and legally you could give these snakes up without getting arrested or going to jail. And, mm-hmm. you know, that was the thing we were scared of. People were going to be so scared of that. They wouldn't release them to someone. They would just let them go. Right. And that's what we wanted to stop. And that's why that episode was so important to me. I didn't want, I wanted to do my part. So everybody's not just dumping their pets because they think they're going to jail. Right. Yeah. And so we filmed it at Forrest and Dez's house. And that was hilarious, man. I still, the pizza box thing was so funny. <laughs> Yeah. And all all we did was we went inside, we released 20 big snakes into the house, went outside, sat outside, just shooting the shit and hanging out for an hour, and then went in the house and had to hunt them down. <laughs> yeah. That was good time. It was fun stuff, man. And Forrest is like, oh my God, they're going to tear up my house. They're going to do that. He's all tearing up something. Oh my God! And then, then he's like, "Dude, it's it's a million degrees out here. I gotta go inside." <laughs> <laughs> he would he would make poor Des wake up at like four o'clock in the morning to come do the rodents till like, and they would work till like seven because then it got too hot for Forrest. He would like just start sweating, and you see one sweat bead come down his head, and he'd be like. Oh my God, it's too hot. I gotta go sleep. I gotta go in air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so he, was, so, he was, so he was high maintenance back in the day too then. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought I used to feel so bad for Dez. I was like, uh, <laughs> the rules are totally reversed here. You're the dude and he's the bitch. <laughs> The, the, one, the one time, the one time he came down and I met him here in downtown San Diego, he's like, "Hey, so do you want to?" You know, I was like, "Do you want to get a bite to eat?" He's like, "Yeah, let's get a bite to eat." He's like, "What do you feel like?" I'm like, "I don't care." I was like, "There's a lot of options." And so, find every place I would say, he he would say, well, "What else do you got? Well, what else do you got?" And I'm like, "Tell me what you're fucking craving." I was like, "Do you want Mexican? Do you want a fucking deli sandwich? Do you want?" And he's like, yeah, deli sandwich sounds good. So we'd walk to a deli sandwich, look at the menu, and he'd be like, hmm, what else is there? And I'm like, bro. <laughs> that's uh, the deli, bro. It's a sandwich. You buy a fucking sandwich. Just eat a sandwich, bro. That's it. It's just, we'll look at the reptiles now. Come on. It was so funny. Dude, you should have seen him. We, Des, what year was it? We went out to the uh, California show, the NARBC show, and we all yeah, took the uh, – Motor home. Yeah. Um, shit, I don't know. God, that was... Maybe 12, 11 or 12. That was probably 12, yeah. And we all took the motor home, and Forrest wanted to go so bad. And I had been filming already for years with, like, Brady Barr, Nigel Marvin, and doing stuff as an animal expert and handler on set for all those guys' shows. Austin Stevens, I did. I did a bunch of shows. And um, Forrest goes, dude, we got to film some stuff, man. I want to come to California, and let's hunt on the way home, and I'm going to film a bunch of stuff. I'm like, okay, cool, let's do this. (laughs) I swear to God, driving to California with him in the RV, (laughs) I had to tell him several times, Forrest, shut up and just go lay down and go to sleep. Because he's, he's like, I'm hungry. You feeling hungry? Dude, I gotta go to the bathroom. You gotta go to the bathroom, and it was like every day. It's worse than a kid. Yeah. Uh, the last time we went to your place, we were drove back and forth. 
on the way back, I'm just driving. He's asleep. And he just rolls over. He's like, Fo is hungry, thirsty. And he like it's like a fucking baby. And he rolls back over and falls asleep. <laughs> that's a, the, he'd wake up and just say the most off the wall shit and then go right back to sleep. You're like, what? <laughs> and uh, Stephen, I I sent you the text. Um, Forrest calls me up. He goes, dude, I'm shipping out your gay lord for you. I said, what? You're shipping Steven? What? And <laughs> he goes, no, I got a gay lord of rodents for you. I'm like, okay. And he goes, we come, Friday comes. I'm like, dude, it's not here. They didn't call me. And he goes, God damn it, Steven. He goes, I've had it with that fucker. Robbie, call him and get on his shit. He's fucking up. <laughs> He did not. I didn't know about the order until you called me. Stephen, I know, I know that that was Forrest though, because I guarantee what happened is Forrest forgot to even tell you to pack the thing and ship it. Yeah, he did that to me a thousand times. I finally had to tell people to stop putting their orders through him because it won't get to me. Like, just straight call me or email me because it's not going to happen. Right, right, and. and, and it was insane, and he's so he just so just scatterbrained, and then he'd yeah. call me up. He he just call me out of the blue and go, dude. So, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm like, <laughs> what? what are you talking about? <laughs> and he goes, well, I, I I don't know about the reptile industry if it's gonna be around much longer. I'm like. Dude, are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh, <laughs> and he, he was, he, God rest his soul, man, because I'm going to miss that so much. And just off the wall shit he would come up with. Um, and I would be like, Forrest, relax. <laughs> Take it day by day, buddy. <laughs> and he'd be going, well, Dude, no, uh, you don't understand. <laughs> I'd be going, dude, you're paranoid. <laughs> and it, just, just a titch. <laughs> and dude, he, he, you know, like Stephen, the last time you guys came down, it, it was so awesome. It was so much fun. Yeah. Just hanging out with you guys and you know seeing Forrest like a kid in a candy store it, it, he he's got that passion and he's one of those few people you met and he truly loved this industry and the animals and that's i saw that in Forrest the first day i met him and that's what really i loved about him and i would have you know love to do stuff with you guys with the rodents all and all that and rob roy always fucking bitched and cried about that shit <laughs> and uh it was just he got so mad at me because i lost this fucking coach whip and like freaked yeah. the fuck out on me and then like force comes in the room and finds the little son of a bitch within two minutes and then throws it at rob roy and is like don't you ever yell at my girlfriend like that again damn yeah yeah Good for Forrest. Yeah, yeah. Forrest, uh, Forrest, you know, the one one thing, Forrest and Des have been together forever, and he loved Des more than anything in the world. And um, I know that because him and I talked about Des, and it's one time you guys had a little rough patch, and I was like, dude, shut up. Quit overthinking shit and just go fucking tell her you love her. <laughs> and he's like, well, dude, you don't understand. That's not going to work. Or she's mad. I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> and, uh, you don't understand. He, <laughs> just the things he used to say were so funny. I know. And, yeah. And the the stupid things we would do there, we had these two guys, Rich and um, Mike, there. And Forrest and I would make him do the stupidest things, and Forrest would film stuff. And, like, I'd make him walk ten paces, 
and then light them up with a paintball gun in the chest. Damn. <laughs> and then if they flinched, they got four shots. And then they had to turn around and take ten to the back. And if they <laughs> and Forrest was from all this stuff, and Big Joe was up there a lot back then, and everybody. We used to have so, dude, we were jackass there at the same time. It was crazy, the shit we used to do. Blowgun wars. Dude, we, we would have blowguns, literally, you know those blowguns with the big metal weapon darts? We would have wars with those things. And the boys would be like, we'd grab one and join us, and then as soon as you shoot at them, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, shit, I quit! Yeah. <laughs> Throw the gun down. Oh, that's, a loser. that's hilarious, man. This, this is fucking stupid! <laughs> this is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I've got like a, a, a six inch dart two inches into my goddamn kidney. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sitting there going, ow, oh, ow, oh, put force, just pull it out. Pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robbie, um, how was, let's, let's talk about your younger days, man. Like, ooh, I mean, how did uh, the, the Crocs, how, how did everything come into your life the way it is now? Um, I grew up actually like in, uh, a suburb of Ohio, right between Akron and Cleveland, called Bath, Ohio. Um, it's like really famous now because LeBron James lives there and all these other idiots. But it's it, it was a nice nice neighborhood. And when I was a kid, dude, there's a store up there called Woolworth, and I remember buying a Cayman. I bought a caiman, an alligator, and a squirrel monkey. And the caiman was like $10, the alligator was $12, and the monkey was $19.99. And that's how I got into this stuff, man. And just, it grew from there, you know. It was just a love for all the animals. When I was a kid, I used to go to my parents' garage and, like sit there and um, set up a big display of animals on the weekend and charge kids a quarter to come through and then release the animals <laughs> Monday and do it again two weeks later. <laughs> That's how I made my money for my bubble yum. <laughs> yeah. Hustler since a young, since a youngster. That's the way to be, man. You're... <laughs> You know, it was it was always a, a passion and a love for animals. My uh, grandfather was a vet. My great grandfather was a vet, and always had the love for wildlife and you know just the want to learn about anything animal related, and just always was in it. And then I did music for years, and then right back to animals, dude. It's been a real crazy life and but something I wouldn't change a thing about you know I lived in LA I lived in Beverly Hills with CC DeVille I was his personal I played in a band called Crayola Kids up on Sunset Strip and nice. everything dude you know back in the heyday in the 80s where you couldn't walk down Sunset Strip shit we played in San Diego you know and Sunset Strip, it would take you walking from like Gazaris to the whiskey. Yeah. It, uh, it would take you an hour and a half, two hours to walk three blocks. And it was. Go by, go by the door, Robbie. Go by the door. Yeah. And you know, that was rolling then out the door. Go by the door. <laughs> My battery's low. I got to, I got to stand here. You're good. But why? <laughs> you're gay. <laughs> no, no, I think you're gay. I think you're good. I think you're gay. I love the gay. No, I said Stephen's gay. <laughs> <laughs> have to be determined. Stephen, I'm sorry I let your secret out, dude. <laughs> but you really got to quit inviting all those meth head gay boys. You know, 
<laughs> you're like the, the, the tiger fucking cat. Tiger King. I'll bet he'd hire Stephen in a minute. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> No, did you? <laughs> no, not I, just, I, just, I just said he hired him. Oh, my God. Hey, Steven, you turn on a little red there, buddy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. What's wrong, Steven? It's okay, sweetheart. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. so, Steven's a swell fella. How many times you met, how many times have you actually met Steven in person? What, twice, Steven? Yeah. Two years ago, right? Yeah, twice. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, what was is it what was it, was that the first time two years ago with, with Barcheck and, and, and that crew? Remember you guys were in a, all together? Yeah. yeah. And then about I, I met you in Chicago the one time at oh. the NARBC show, right? Tinley. At or, Tinley, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Mm. Yeah, and then that last time when uh when Nick was from uh, Europe was also there at your place. Yeah. Yeah, when Nick was staying with us. Mm. <laughs> hey Robbie, yeah. so let's uh That's right. Let's talk about some of your some of the favorite animals you love working with. I mean, what what? Uh, let's talk about like, um, you know, I mean, I mean, you have your favorites or what? I mean, you, you work with so much shit, so. Dude, it's. I don't know if you can say favorites because every day it's a different favorite. It's like you know, like Boris was too. It's it changes every day because you're working with so many animals and it just. Like T Bo in that group. There's twelve alligators and a crocodile in that pen. And I literally in that pen every day for at least an hour. Feeding, whether I'm laying down on the ground with them or whatever. And you know, then the Cuban crocs. And then the all the babies and the snakes. But I'm I'm so scatterbrained, dude. I can't have a favorite because I'm I'm from here to there to there to there. You know, I'm Robbie. You know, my little wallaby that we got from Forest and Des is incredible. Oh man, there's just so much. How's that? How's that little? How's that? Uh, how's that wallaby doing, man? He's awesome, dude. He is so awesome. He's like up to my knee now, oh, and. Oh, cool. He is, he is the coolest. He is the coolest thing, and he loves my son, loves Chris, and loves myself and other people. He will try to kick your ass. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's hilarious. You go Maybe. pet him, and he'll 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 kick you and take off and come running right back at you for more. You miss him, Steven? That was that was a wild uh, <laughs> wallaby, man. That was something you, else. You, you took, care of, that, you took care of that thing for a while, Steven, right? For like four days on a road trip in Florida. The whole oh, time. Yeah. I remember seeing pictures of you holding it, dude, like a baby. Then I'm like that little seven pouch. months pregnant. And they're like, yeah. hey, can we bring this freaking kangaroo home? I'm like, no. Like, I said yes, but then they're like, no. They decided not to. And we almost lost it too, which was well. What happened, Des? What happened was Force had the flight booked for him, and what was it? Two days before, three days before Christmas. Yeah. And and um, the he got bumped off the flight, and Forrest rented a car, and then he's he's on his way up to my house, and he wanted to stop by before he headed home. And he, so I fed the wallaby for him. And then I'm like, dude, you're going to drive home by yourself. He goes, well, will you drive with me? <laughs> and um, I said, yeah, sure. He goes, I'll fly you back home. And I go, yeah, sure. Let's go look for flights. And uh, flight, one way was like $500. Yeah. Because it was, 
three days, two days to Christmas, whatever it was, three or two days. And I was like, boy, so you're not spending $500 on a fucking flight. Fuck that. <laughs> and he was like, well, dude, what do I got to do with the wallaby? I'm like, feed it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, what do I do to make him shit and piss? I go, stimulate him and let him run, you know, pull in a truck stop. And I guess the the night before, he had lost it at Cody's place. And they, they had lost him for an hour and a half, two hours in the woods mm-hmm. at night. And they finally found him. And then he was in a total panic, dude. The sweat was coming off his fucking forehead, and it was fucking 40 degrees outside. And I was like, he's like, dude, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, 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 and just started stuttering, and I'm like, dude, uh, what, do you, what do you want? And, and then he's like, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll trade you the wallaby for a hypo alligator. I'm like, dude take the hypo alligator i'm like uh, just relax <laughs> it, you know it'll all be okay for us <laughs> and he's like all right all right all right cool cool all right uh, but this is a male so as soon as as soon as i can get some females let's get a couple of females and we'll breed them and i'm like okay for us because <laughs> i knew right away that meant I'll get a couple of females and you're going to breed them. <laughs> and with Forrest, it's, whenever he found a cool animal, it was the coolest thing in the world and let's breed it. Yeah. <laughs> let's breed it. it. Hey, this is the one of the most rarest animals in the world, so we're going to breed it. <laughs> right, you're right. And it, it, that's the same way I am, though, dude. Same. All of us who love, truly have a passion for it, look at McCurley, look at Barcheck, you know, breed everything. Mass produce it, and it's in captivity, and that's the sure way you're going to make sure it stays around. Yep. It'll never go extinct then. Yeah. What are some of the... And that's... Oh, go ahead, Robbie. What do what now? What are some of the snakes you're... No, I couldn't hear you. You broke up. What are the some snakes you work with? Um, this I work with everything, dude. Mostly venomous, um, inland taipans, uh, mang shangs, kings, gaboons, uh, the mambas, um, all that that stuff. A lot of a lot of the lapids, a lot of the lapids. I've got uh, the Philippine spitting cobra, the sam- samars. I've got. Um, zebra spitting cobras from South Africa, um, black necks, reds, Damn. Um, monocles, um, I used to always be into the venomous, I, like, Des and Forrest used to tell, I had my private venomous room, and Des and Forrest used to take care of that, that room, because I was always to shows and gone and filming or somewhere. So I just let Des and uh, Forrest take care of that room for a while. You know, this, it just depends. I haven't put anything together to breed in the last two years because I've just been so busy taking care of everybody. You know, and it's a lot of work when you got that many animals and you got a farm that's 40 acres. And then... You know, it's it's been fun and everything. It's but people think it's all fun and games because I, I realize we make it look that way because it, we're posting pictures of stuff and people don't realize. You know, I'll spend maybe a whole day doing videos and taking pictures, and I'll post them through the week um, because I'm way too busy to do it every day. You, you just Cool stuff happens, you know. You don't go, and it's us, man. Like today, we were. Um, I just joined uh, um, Snake Snap, which is a snake identification 
app that a couple friends are coming out with that is incredible. No matter where you live in the United States, if you see a snake, just take a picture of it, send it to Snake Snap, and they'll identify it for you. And this is a really, really cool thing. This years ago, back then, because the technology wasn't there. Right. And now the technology's caught up, and you can actually do that. So these guys came out with it, and they patented it and everything, and uh, they copyrighted it and all. And they asked me to um, join that. And I said, hell yeah, this is cool as hell, because everybody sends me pictures nonstop. I get flooded every day. And that's why you just saw the video I did with the, I saw a yellow rat snake, so I filmed that. And I saw the black racer, I filmed that. And I try to do, my big thing is to share my passion. You know, if I can infect some other kid with this same sickness that I have, <laughs> um, it was worth it. And there's there's been a few people, look at Forrest. Forrest, you know, and Des built a successful business, and they already had the love and passion, but, you know, it's, I used to always tell Forrest, do it, dude, do it, do it, and then we have the guy from Venom 1, Chuck Seifert, you know, he was, he was a little kid working at my house when he was a kid washing bowls. And he never even liked snakes. And he started working for me, washing bowls and cleaning cages. And all of a sudden, he was hooked. And then he grew up and became on Venom One's team. You know, one of the firefighters who were on the snake team. And, uh, you know, Mike Gar, God, he went from our place to Disney to... He's at San Diego Zoo now. Yeah. And... Dude, stuff like that is what makes me love what I do. You know, and I tell everybody all through life, share your passion, man. Share it. I don't care what it is, dude. If you're passionate about it, share it. And I love hearing about other people's passions because I'm sick. I love learning. <laughs> you know, you can never stop learning. Yeah, and you'll never know everything. So it's it's cool to me. It's, to me, it's a, a like a trip, like a, a sickness that. Oh, dude, that's cool. <laughs> you know, there's stuff I can't do, and I still love to find out how to do it. And that's what gets me going. I think that's the good thing about passion is I mean, if you're truly passionate about something, then you're not going to want to stop learning about whatever the fuck it is that you're passionate about. Like, cause you're only going to want to master it and there's no mastering fucking animal keeping. There isn't. You're, you're there's, there's, there's no experts in it. I used to yeah. hate when people call you an expert because dude, what works for you might not work for someone else. Yeah. And, you can never stop learning because it always evolves. It always changes. And that's, that's what these, you know, people, there's successful people in the animal business, but if you want to be truly successful, ask my bar check. It's not the animal business. It's going to be little things off the animal business that make you successful. Yep. 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 The stuff that spins off of it. I feel you on that. Right. Right. And, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's the animal industry's changed so much. Like with Blades Hope, we used to send out a flyer every month and, you know, the internet has just created so much competition and so many so-called experts that it's, it's a joke, dude. And, there's there's so many people that are truly passionate about it, but then you got those people that sit there and hide behind their keyboards and are little jackasses that run their mouths and think they know everything. Those and it's are, like those are, those are the ones we have to learn to live with nowadays, unfortunately, because they're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're always gonna they have exactly that they have the power of their freedom of speech behind a fucking keyboard, which 
you know, the, you, what's fucked up is a lot of these little fucking geeks and nerds out there. They they build up, they kind of group up together and they attack together, and it's fucking very annoying, dude. It's very annoying, and 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 it's literally a group of people who have zero knowledge on on the matter of anything. So that's it, it's and they and they love to throw stones in glass houses, you know, and it's it's so it's so childish and just stupid if you spent half the time sharing your passion and learning more that you do attacking people you'd be awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't get it you know but it's and then i'm you know i try to diversify i, I do stuff with SA company the uh, clothing company here out of boca raton i do wildlife wednesdays they approached me they said listen we love your enthusiasm. We love your videos. We watch them all the time. We'd love to start a series on our page, Wildlife Wednesday, with you guest uh, hosting it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. That sounds awesome. And it's been really a lot of fun. And they have turned out to be an incredible, incredible company. They make all these face masks, you know, the face shields you see right. with the clown faces and everything. And these guys donated over a hundred thousand face masks across the state in florida to people to sheriff's department police departments firefighters everything uh, all the first responders and it just it was it blew my mind it was like wow these guys are great guys you know they truly care about the community and about the welfare of people and i'm proud to be attached to them you know, it's something that and it's weird because I just believe in giving back so much. That's that's a big part of me. I think that's you a know, big, not really. A, that's a big part for a lot of people, Robbie. When people start learning, because that's where I'm at. I'm like now learning to like it feels good to give, like actually give, and not not because it's not about getting something returned. It's just because, like you said, right. share sharing passion like it's in giving in any way like sharing your passion is giving you know you know taking your time to respond his dm is fucking is you know all those things matter you know what i mean so um of course dude yeah i know what you mean dude it, that hit home that hit home to me when you say that because i'm at a stage now it's always been me 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 my whole fucking life it's just the way i it's all, all the way i've been but you know now i'm in a hobby where I like to fucking teach people stuff. I like to give people the time of day and I like to do things to help them out because in this hobby, when other people grow, we all grow. It's just only going to help all of us. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Right. It's, it's so, it's so cool. It's, you know, it's the, the cool thing about Swamp Brothers is, you know, we try to keep everything real and Trust me, we used to get yelled at all the time. And, well, can you do this? Can you do this? And, no, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. And, you know, they're like, oh, but the channel wants you to. No, I'm not going to do it. And shit like that. And, you know, because you have so many people out there that are just, they want to see drama. Yeah, that's what's said. You know, and yeah and people people love seeing things that make their situation seem a lot better that's just exactly what right it is. yeah right steven and that is that is truly what it really is and you know it's it's crazy stuff bro um yeah it is it's reality t the reality is nuts and it's What's crazy is it's not even reality. No, it's not. And that's what people don't realize. When you get do reality, it was like, uh, for example, we were sitting in Tebow's pen. And we were messing around with a bunch of uh, gators. And then we stopped filming and we're eating lunch. And my cameraman and I stayed in Tebow's pen. And, dude, I eat a sandwich and I'm done and I'm back playing around and they're like I'm in there I grab up a eight foot gator and I open his jaws put my head in there and then I'm doing hand tricks getting him to pop his mouth and 
the producer walks by and sees this and goes, Martin, hurry, hey. grab your camera. You got must film this stuff. And she goes, okay, Rebby, let's, let's film a bunch of this. And I said, absolutely not. She said, what do you mean? And I said, I'm not doing it. And she goes, you have to. I just saw you doing it. I said, I'm not doing it. Some little kid's going to go grab a gator, do, try this, and get hurt. You can, you can put all you want on there. Don't try this at home. And it, it, they're not going to listen. They're going to see you do it, and they're going to go try it. Yeah. And so I'm not about, you know, it's how the, we came to do this was we were talking about all these gator shows. And that's not me, dude. I would rather swim with a gator and lay on, lay on the beach with a gator then get on top of him and open his mouth and do stupid shit like that. Because to me, it's a respect thing for more with me. I'm not about the testosterone thing. I grew up, I did that shit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, you guys, Des knows who Dave Weathers is. He's a good friend of mine. And, Dave actually started in the business cleaning snake cages at my house in Cutler Ridge. And he was 15 years old. 15 years old. His mom would drop him off at my house on Friday night. And I would take him back to Fort Lauderdale on um, Sunday. And we would go out came and hunt. We'd clean venomous snakes all day and do all kinds of crazy shit. And, you know... Back then, the difference is we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have cell phones with these cameras on them that you could do all this. And you see these kids doing stuff, and Weathers calls me up, go look at his page, dude, and I'm, I'll go look at it, and it, you laugh to yourself because you're like, okay, I did that 25 uh, years ago. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's stuff in... Back then, it's like Dave Weathers and I, we would sit there clean a hot, the hot room, and we used to play chicken. And the guy would reach in the cage, touch a, a venomous snake, and the next guy would have to touch it like two inches higher up body. So, <laughs> Weathers and I are doing this with black mambas and green mambas. And <laughs> You know, it was stupid. <laughs> you guys are nuts. And it, dude, it, 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 the things you come up with are so idiotic when you're young. You know, it's you think you're invincible, and then you grow up and you learn. Oh shit! I could have been dead. <laughs> <laughs> The stuff, you know, you I've seen through the years. I remember getting shipments from Africa, and things are marked on the bags, and they're marked wrong. And you open the bag, and I remember being in my in the hot room one time, and a bag's marked Egyptian cobra. I open the bag, and a flipping eleven foot black mamba shoots out, and is just sitting there looking at me. I'm like, oh shit, and. Thank God he took off across the top of the cages and just was up there. And because he was standing straight up like a pogo stick standing out of the bag, and I'm holding the bag. Oh, and then he just went right across the top of the cages, and this is a fresh wild-caught black mamba, huge motherfucker. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I cranked the AC in a room. And just come back two hours later and boom, catch them, put them in the cage. <laughs> but this, the craziest shit you see like that. And then you get guys who will pack a eight foot black mamba in a, a tube sock. You're like, what the hell? How the hell did you get this in here? <laughs> and it, it, the stuff is, it's ridiculous, dude. And the, the things I've seen, you know, these guys do, and it's, the ammo industry been around for so long. I remember being a kid coming down to Miami to Pet Farm 
Dude, you could buy a chimpanzee, you could buy a sun bear, you could buy anything you wanted. Mm -hmm. And no permits, no nothing. Go in, buy it. You had the money, buy it. And a chimpanzee was like 500 bucks. <laughs> Fuck. How's your livers? They're awesome. They're awesome. We've got two pregnant this year. Oh, God. We've got uh, 11 of them now. Yeah. What did, what did you ask, Des? How was his lemurs. what? Lemurs. Oh, dude. What? We just lemurs, got them when we were there. Like, we wow. were acquired them when we were there. What about the kinkajou? Yep. Kinkajou Rob took those. Those were his. Oh, I got bit by my um, dad. Yeah. Uh, by Yoda? Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, were you there the there that day? day they like, tried me to grab it, and I just had a towel that I was going to grab it with, and it just grabbed me right on this part of my hand and just wouldn't let go. It was one of the worst bites, yeah, pressure wise. Oh my god, uh, I remember. I don't know. If you, I don't think you were there that day. It was Rigo and uh, Forrest. They're running around, and um, I come outside. And I'm like, "What the hell? The Kikachu's out!" And uh, they're w running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And they're <laughs> running up to this animal and hesitating, trying to grab it, and jumping back yeah. and running away from it. <laughs> and I walk out there. I pick, I grab the thing by the tail, pick it up, and they're like. Dude, what the hell? Aren't you scared? I'm like, what? Well, it can't do anything now. You hold it by the tail, or it can't turn up back up and grab you. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it can. I'm like, really? Here you go. Put them back in the cage. And they're like, holy shit, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and just this stuff, you know, you learn and you teach people, and they learn this stuff is really neat. Yeah. It's so much fun, dude. And the forest and Des were, uh, it, they were a blessing to have down there. It was so much fun with them. And it was how and long? Des, you know I love you to death. Two years you're down there for, Des? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I went to nursing school in Tampa, and that's when we moved to Houston. I was like 2013. Yeah. And, and like, who met who? That's why I want to figure out, Robbie, did, did Forrest just step foot on your property and introduce himself, or how did it work? Well, through Cody. Yeah. Cody. Him and Cody and Rigo came. Okay. You know, they, Forrest, Forrest wanted, his big thing was he wanted to film stuff all the time. Yeah. He and he, was, he went through a period where he wanted to be a cameraman. <laughs> Had a, Imagine that. Yeah. Forced one to do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it was just, and it was fun because Forrest got to see a lot of the stuff, how stuff was actually filmed. We filmed um, 26 episodes of Deadly Dozen and um, uh, Deadliest for Nat Geo. And we filmed other shows. We filmed Moment of Impact. We filmed uh, um, the Big Flying Snakes episode. We did a bunch of stuff. And Forrest got to see all that stuff and meet all these cameramen. And all of a sudden, Forrest wanted to be a cameraman. Because I was filming with all these people for years. And for seven years before Swamp Brothers. Mm -hmm. And that's how we ended up getting the show was we were filming with, uh, you guys watch Shark Week, right? Who? Shark Week? Oh, Shark Week, yeah, fuck yeah, 100%. Okay, well, the, the best cameraman on there is ABC, Andy Brandy Casagrande. Um, yeah, right? And him and Andy Mitchell were filming this show called... Uh, Serpent King, and it was with National Geographic, and uh, we were filming that show. I was filming with King Cobras. The shoot went uh, 12 days, and uh, thanks, bro. And um, Stephen 
was everybody nobody wanted to work the uh, last day so i got steven to help me and we're putting king cobras on this big 16 foot by 16 foot table that's all done up so it looks like india and we got to get some shots on there king cobra takes off off the table steven's got one side of the table to watch one side one side i'm covering three fucking sides and the King Cobra, I put it on the table in a beeline, right for Steven. Steven takes the hook, tries to push it back. It comes up the hook. Steven throws the hook and runs. <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm running around the table, and this thing's taking off across the grass and headed right for the pond. I went sliding across the grass on my knees, grabbed it by the table, and popped up, and I'm holding a, a damn eight-foot king cobra that's trying to bite me in the face, and I'm yelling at Steven in his face, so close, and I'm spitting all over his face as I'm yelling, and he goes, quit spitting on me! <laughs> and and Andy Brandy, ABC, is filming this. And I see him filming it, I go, dude, what the fuck are you doing this isn't fucking funny and i go you guys could have been dead and he's like dude dude calm down i go fuck you calm down we're done today get the fuck out and uh i was throwing a fit dude i was going ape shit and then they're laughing their asses off steven's yelling back at me because he's got he's butt hurt now and i made him look like an idiot in front of these cameramen and I'm like, you are a fucking idiot. And he, so he goes, I started to calm down, and Andy goes, Robbie, come here. And he goes, you got to watch this. I go, what? And he starts playing back the video, dude, and it's in 4K. You can see my spit coming out and hitting Steven in the face. <laughs> and you can see this King Cobra, I didn't even know, was trying to bite me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hilarious and they took it and gave it they showed a bunch of their friends and all of a sudden the next week we had like 10 offers to sign deals with flipping production companies yeah. and we narrowed it down chose a company <coughs> signed we filmed uh we started filming we filmed a teaser then they call us up and they say, hey, we need some footage of you guys with some mammals. I said, all right, cool. I got friends that have mammals that we'll go fuck with and do stuff. So we drive up to a friend of ours who has elephants, and we're fucking around with the big elephant. It's lifting me up off the ground and everything, and we're filming all this stuff. And uh, we get done filming, and Storyhouse calls and goes, we don't need to film. I go, what do you mean? You told me that you needed the footage. We went and got it. And I'm going to Dropbox it to you as soon as I get home. He goes, forget it. We don't need it. I go, dude, are you serious? He goes, that Discovery said we don't need it. Yeah. I go, so now what? We're, we're, we're done with Discovery? And he goes, no, no. They, bought, they, bought, they want to do a pilot. I said, are you kidding me? And he goes, no. They want to do the pilot. They bought the pilot. And then I was like, okay, cool. So when are we going to film? Um, he said, we'll be down in like two weeks. And you're going to, Discovery's coming down. You're going to meet them. And you're going to meet uh, your, your cameraman that we're going to use. And I said, okay, cool. And um, it's, it, they come down. They're, they start talking to us. And we go film just a couple stuff. And the next day, Storyhouse calls us and goes, dude, your pilot's canceled. I go, what do you mean it's canceled? We just fucking filmed the thing. How can it be canceled? Because they don't want the pilot. I go, uh, are you shitting me? Seriously? And he goes, you're going straight to season. I was like, what? He goes, dude, they were so impressed. You're going straight to season. And... I said, okay, and they, they bought 12 episodes, so now they're going, okay, we're going to start filming in a month, 
because that's when egg laying season is starting and we can start to film some cool shit right off the bat. Right. So it was like, all right, this is going to be cool. Gators, we can do all that. We can do the Crocs. We can do all this stuff and we'll get, we'll have a bunch of cool episodes. We'll get 12 easy. And, um, we went in and we're filming the first day and we get done fil filming the next morning uh production comes in and they go robbie they need you in the trailer and i say okay and just as i'm walking in the trailer to talk to the owner of story house my agent calls from new york and goes robbie did you hear anything i go what are you talking about they're just calling me to the production trailer he goes okay keep me on speakerphone go in there and i'm going to tell all of you i said he goes robbie are you sitting down i go yeah i'm sitting down we're all in here he goes, they canceled your 12 episodes. <laughs> I, I go, dude, what do you mean they canceled our 12? This, 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 dude, quit fucking around. This isn't even funny. And I go, so now what do we do, Steve? And Steve Sadicario from Beanstalk Entertainment. Um, I go, what do we do? And he goes, you guys are going to be busy for the next fucking two years. I go, what do you mean? He goes, they won 24 episodes. I said, are you fucking kidding me? I go, where the fuck are you? And he goes, I'm in Carnes. I'm here with the uh, with um, Clark Bunting, the head of Discovery, and he's sitting here right here with me. And Clark said, Robbie, I just want you to know the footage we got from you guys yesterday was fucking incredible. You guys were taking 24 episodes. I was like, uh... Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and we signed the biggest deal in like 20 years because we went from a pilot to fucking 24 episodes. And no one sells 24 episodes back then, you know? And they don't even sell that many episodes nowadays. You're lucky if you can sell six. Yeah. And that's how it was back then. And then... As soon as we finished 22 episodes, they canceled us one more time and told us they want 36. So we filmed 36 episodes of Swamp Brothers, oh. and we were supposed to be Discovery Channel's golden child because they were canceling Deadliest Catch, and um, they just, uh, Orange County Chopper just ended then. Right. So we were supposed to be the new hit show. And then, you know, we're doing all kinds of shit, just having a blast with it. The show premieres. We're pulling good numbers, dude. We're pulling really good numbers. And then um, Clark Bunting's cool as hell, the head of Discovery. He's a super nice guy. He would actually call me once a week. You guys happy? Everything going good? And we're like, yeah, dude, this is great. Thank you so much, man. And... It was, it was phenomenal, dude. I remember sitting there one day, we're catching Cayman, and my phone rings, and uh, Swamp Brothers is already airing, and it was uh, Bob Irwin, and he goes, uh, uh, Robbie? And I'm like, yeah, who is this? And he goes, this is Bob Irwin. I went, shut up, dude. I don't got time for this. What, who is this? <laughs> and he goes, this is Bob Irwin. I go, really, dude, you're going to fuck around and tell me that I'm in the middle of catching up a shit ton of came and, and you're going to fuck around with me and tell me you're Bob Irwin. <laughs> and my phone beeps. And I go, hold on. And because now I'm pissed off. I want to know who's fucking with me. Who's fucking with you? I want to hear the story now. Oh, God. Oh, you got me interested. Beeps, I answered the other one. I, I, Go He's like, I hope you don't mind. I just gave Bob Irwin your cell phone number. I was like, holy shit. I gotta go. I got back on, sir. I'm so sorry. That was Clark telling me he just gave you my cell phone. And he goes, no, no, it's quite okay. I just wanted to tell you that since my son, since he passed away, your guys' show is my favorite show, animal show. And I went, I, dude, I've got goosebumps right now. I was like, thank you so much much sir dude that means so much and he said he saw an interview i did 
before and you know back then you're doing interviews it sucked because everybody compared you to steve Irwin, and i hated that and you go do an interview and the first thing they ask you was so how do you compare yourself to steve Irwin?" and my answer was always i don't we both have a love for wildlife and that's the only comparison i'm robbie he's steve and steve's dad was like that's the best answer i've ever heard anyone give and i was like oh, i was just being honest dude dude i loved your son he was great but you know the only thing we have in the wildlife <laughs> i'm out of my mind he was great <laughs> you know so i'm not even in the same damn ballpark <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he was great out of his mind yeah yeah and that's you know that's to be good at this dude, you gotta be out of your mind fuck yeah you gotta you just you know make so much balls I'm not even joking <laughs> and, and it's it's not dude everyone says that dude your ball your kahunas are huge dude no it's that this is what i do yeah look at look at race car drivers you know i'm not going 250 miles an hour in a circle fuck that shit <laughs> you know it's it's dude it's it's what you do it's what you love and you're truly passionate about it it looks like you're out of your mind but you're just well, being... maybe just a little <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! So, Robbie, yeah. I have to ask you: What do you think the future looks like as far as with, uh, you know, with what's going on? You know, well, first off, what's the future looking like with your, you know, with 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 you getting back on TV again? Do you think that's a possibility? I don't want to do it. We've uh, we've already turned down stuff. I don't want to do it. Okay. TV controls what what you what's released. Right. Remember, they edit. And what we want, what we're gonna do is grow our YouTube, and you know that's what we're playing. Um, there was 16 episodes of Swamp Brothers that we've been playing them one by one on YouTube. We release one every Saturday night that has never been seen before in the United States, and those are the ones that we've been releasing one at a time. And as soon as that's done, we're gonna start playing new stuff that things we're doing, which is there's a lot of cool things coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, this Corona stuff put a lot of things on hold. Yeah, and we gotta wait till the government starts back up, and we can start getting the stuff we need. And um, mm -hmm. that'll happen soon, though, dude. And then we're gonna start filming that, and we'll put together a show quality YouTube uh, show. We'll put it out on YouTube, dude. Our who knows? We may sell it to Amazon, or we may sell it to uh, Netflix. We'll see what happens, but that way we deliver a finished show. Right. That's all you need. Know, I don't have to put up with someone attacking me because I'm doing what something I love. That I'm keeping an animal in a cage. And basically, that's how it happened to us with Discovery. Clark Hunting stepped down. Eileen O'Neill took over, and she was an animal activist. Yeah. And, dude, of course she's gonna. She's, you know, if you know, if you followed Swamp Brothers, she she switched us from Monday nights to Wednesday nights without announcing it, then switched it to Thursday nights, then switched us to uh, Saturday nights, then back to Monday nights, and then she goes, "Oh, your numbers are falling." So then they sent us over to Animal Planet, and they had already played our first series five times on Discovery with the marathons on Saturdays and everything. Right. They had Go by the door, fool. <laughs> yep. The... That way. We, they, sent us, they sent us over to Animal Planet... <laughs> and Animal Planet put us on before Gator Boys, and we pulled a 1.7 on a fifth time replay, and they pulled a 0. 0.4. <laughs> yeah. 
And the Animal Planet was like, yeah, no, we're keeping, we can't put these guys on here. They're going to destroy our show. Yeah. And there was a big fight over that then. And then there ended up being a producer suing um, the production company for sexual harassment. And wow. then the, our show got buried because of a lawsuit that she filed against uh, Storyhouse Productions for sexual harassment. And, you know, that's part of the lawsuit. Brothers in the United States. Stop it in the rest of the world because you would have to sue in every country. Right. She could only stop it here. So the rest of the world got to see all 36 episodes. And, dude, it's funny because they're still playing today. Yeah, that's fucked up. They're still playing in Brazil. Dude, we got so many fans in Brazil and Germany and Austria and everything. It's crazy. You know, it's just, it is so insane. But what do you do? Yeah. You know? What are you going to do? You, you move forward. Yeah. You move forward. You, you use that as a stepping stone. And that's all that show ever was, was a stepping stone for me to share my passion. It gave me a great platform to get kids excited about animals. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's the thing. You never, you never saw me in the show acting like I was an expert, even though they called me an expert a couple times, or using scientific names or terminology, which your everyday child couldn't understand. Because you don't do that, dude. You want to hook someone in this, you get them excited, you do it out of humor yep. and education. You don't yeah. force scientific shit down their throat because then they're gonna hate it. Yeah, or make it, or make it to where they can't understand it, no matter what. That's what's the fucking point. You know what I mean? So, what? And you know, because that's I used to ask Des that Forrest and I, Forrest still did it, but Forrest and I, everything was scientific names all the time. And Stephen walked in one day. And he goes, hey, what the fuck is a Neodesha? <laughs> and I go, what? <laughs> and, and he goes, a fucking Neodesha, what kind of snake is that? I go, dude, it's a cage. <laughs> he goes, no, it's not. It's one of those stupid scientific oh, fucking dude, names. Like and what I really... It, it's... You know, then that's the truth. That's that's someone who didn't know, but he wanted to learn about them because he thought they were cool. Yeah. And, dude, you fill people with all the scientific shit, you're going to lose them. Yeah. You know, let, let there be the scientific people that teach the people once they're hooked... to learn more. Be a person, dude. I'm the person that wants to get these kids hooked, that gets kids excited about it. Like, we did, did look what happened to me three years ago now in June. Someone, we had Snowball. You know, an incredible alligator. And sucks. someone came in there, stole him, burnt down my building, and took him. Now, Snowball was the most incredible alligator because I would go around to schools nice truck I do shows and I would literally take snowball out and he was my anti-bullying tool because I would sit there and I go all right guys I do a bunch of animals and talk about them and it was crazy because then I'd stop and talk about bullying bullshit and teachers would look at me and I'm like Look, this is ridiculous what you guys are doing. And you see the kids start, to, you start to lose them. And that was the whole point of doing it. And then I go, okay, wait, we'll get back to that later. I want to show you something super cool. And I'd whip out Snowball and they'd all go, oh my God, oh my God, he's super cool. I'm like, exactly. Look at him, man. Isn't he awesome? And then I go, how many of you guys out there have blue eyes? And you get this small show of hands and you go, check out his eyes. They're blue. Just like yours. Just like. 
Yeah, that's gnarly. And they'd be like, you know, you you affect kids like that. And then I'd go, now what do you think other gators think about him if I threw him in the swamp? They'd be like, oh, dude, you're ugly. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, and that's, they'd pick on him. And why? Because he's unique? Because he's cool looking? And then you'd see the teachers go, oh my god. And I go, exactly, dude. Look at the kid next to you. He looks different, doesn't he? I don't care if you're, it's your twin next to you. They're still different in some way. What's the sense of being an idiot to them? What does it prove? What does it make you? Yeah, nothing. And they'd, they'd, they'd be like, okay, I, we get it. We get it. And the teachers would thank me and say, Robbie, you just hit on that in 10 minutes what we can't do all year. Yeah. And, I, and that's the animal. You pull out an albino, it scares them because kids, kids get scared because they have pink or red eyes. Yeah. And they, they think it's evil. You know, so that's it's fucked up. That's it. Hey, hey, Steven. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, Steven's ready to get. Oh yeah, nipple. There you go. Oh god. Woo. <laughs> it it's up. concerning, Robbie, that you see me. You just start like pulling your nipples out. Like I don't know what it makes you think, but like. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. Listen, sign Tinder up. man. <laughs> That's a good what? sign up there, Robbie. I mean, I mean, you're the one who's at a pawn shop at like 10:30 p.m. Like, who are you meeting out back there? Like, I don't really know. Yeah, Hope you turn right. before you I, go back there. I'm in front, baby. I'm in front <laughs> yeah, for, for now, and then someone will be behind. Oh now. my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Steven. uh vehicle. Make sure he doesn't go to the truck stop over there, like Forrest said he was hanging out at. <laughs> that's where Stephen was fine. That's where he, that's hangouts. The truck stops. That's na man. That's crazy, oh, Stephen. What's oh, going on? With <laughs> oh man, dude. I, right. I, I, I wish uh, you know Boris would be here. Yeah, uh, you and everyone I miss, else. I miss him. I miss him so much. Yeah, man. I miss the fucking living shit out of him. Steven, I see that. It, it just... It, it, I don't even know, dude. I just talked to him Friday, and he goes, dude, I'll call you back. And you don't think anything of it, you know, because Forrest and I did that to each other constantly. Dude, yep. you're busy, and I'll be right back. And we'd call each other back, but it'd be two, three days later. And my phone rings Monday. I'm at the market getting food, and it's... Dez. You there, Bobby? Well, it's going going to be a good story. Back up. Gotta go back the door, my man. <clears throat> Can't hear you. His phone's probably dying. That's usually what happens when the phone dies. And yep, the phone died. I was gonna have Robbie sign off anyways, but I'm sure he'll he'll come back on, so he could kind of give us an outro. He was kind of telling he was telling us a cool story. Well, not really a cool story to be honest, but. Not for me. Yeah, we're sad. Um, oh, what happened? <laughs> oh. What the fun? I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. Here we go. That's better. Well, listen. Um, fuck, Robbie. Robbie. Uh, Robbie's a character, man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> He's fucking hilarious. Uh, I didn't know he had that. I didn't know he had that outgoing of per, outgoing of a personality. But I feel like a lot of people who fucking are in this hobby as deep as he is are like that for the most part. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Zero fucks. Yeah, for real. Now those are my kind of people, man. I can't. I cannot not like those kind of people. That's how I am. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm definitely not as crazy as Robbie. 
I want to be maybe someday. <laughs> uh, you know, but Robbie's just he's just one of those people that are born with that kind of passion. Um, in my opinion, it, it takes a lot of balls to fucking do what he does. I don't give a fuck what anybody's. I mean, like he, he is just being him, but it is still takes a lot personal, like personally to fucking hop in a goddamn cage with the shit that he's working with. Hi, Robbie. Are you by the door? Hey! Hey! Is it working better? Yeah. Well, sort of, sort of, kind of, not really. How about now? Yeah, we can hear you. You're good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're, you're clear. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, oh, I'm such an asshole. <laughs> I like it, though. So even if I admit it. So you call me an asshole, fine. I'll answer that. I'm cool. <laughs> Open mission is everything, man. Just when you're when you got when you can just admit it, it's not a big deal. Right? Exactly. Exactly. It feels better. Yeah, you don't have to fucking not, you don't live in denial because it's full of fucking man eating crocodiles. <laughs> oh! <laughs> um. Do you have any um do you have any stories off the top of your head or something you know that's the most memorable story of Forrest that you want to share, Robbie? Something I mean I'm, I'm sure there's tons of them, but is there anything that stands out in particular that you want to share? The, 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 like there were so many stories on the trip to California and home that it, it, you don't even you know, you remember them and you're like, what the what happened here? What happened there? And everything and all you remember is you had a blast yeah and you know we broke down our transmission went out on the way home and forrest and rich were about to kill them kill each other i mean those two were fighting like two women <laughs> and dude and and forrest had just gotten to the point where he's like fuck this dude fuck this dude i'm i'm flying home I go, dude, just do it then, you know. But in, then he, he was an hour before he leaves. He was he was trying to change his flight because he didn't want to go home then. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, you already booked your flight. There, I got you a ride to the airport. Just go home. But I, I don't want to go, dude. I want to stay. I go, oh my god, Forrest. Good. And. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's, it's just a big, he was so much fun and so full of passion and so full of love, dude. Des, I remember that he called me when you had the baby and when you had Lars, and he was so excited. Yeah. And, and he texted me a picture and right away, and I remember you bitching at him going, I can't believe you're sending people the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's been ready for that. Uh, and, dude, he was so, you know, just full of love and everything. And if you if you truly knew Forrest, you, you couldn't help but love him. Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing. And I know Stephen, he loved you to death because we talked about you a lot. And... He would get mad at you, and I'd go, dude, then get rid of him. And he'd, he'd be like, but but he's actually pretty good. i go, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> then teach him. He's a kid. And he'd go, I know, I know, I know. But it, it's stuff like that. And he loved you to death, Stephen. And does you know. Yeah. You, you know, baby. I know. There's just... You were his rock, and he would fuck shit up all the time, and Des would have to dig him out of it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Goddamn. And, yeah, Des is a saint, trust me. A saint. And I, Des, when I die, I'm nominated. I'm saying, hey, big guy. Nominate this woman. Thanks. <laughs> she had to live with Forrest. <laughs> He'll go, she what? <laughs> yeah, she had to live with Forrest. Okay, she's in. 
<laughs> he's all look. He's all looking through the documents. Like, holy shit, you're right. Fuck, she, she did it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Yeah, we're. I think uh, Des has been the best, best part of this show. I'll tell you that. We we love having her on here and being a part of it. It's, it's mm -hmm. been awesome. Dude, she's she. Des is one of the hardest working women. You know. Right there, Lori Barchak, Dez, and you guys are the rocks that hold your gut men together, you know. that. Um, without Dez, Force would have been doing who knows what, <laughs> because he was too damn scatterbrained. <laughs> yeah. That's and Steven, you know, he held it the shop together there with the animals and Forrest was always wanting to take off and go do this, go do that. And, you know, Steven taking care of all the animals there and Saint. And trust me, I know how it is because I'm the same way Forrest as you know, that does I'm gone constantly. And I'm, I expect everyone to do everything for me. And, and sometimes we forget to thank people for, you know, we just, for what they do for us and it, it's just it's part of life dude and it's not that we mean to or anything it's just that's what ends up happening and we overlook stuff and i do it all the time i, th I think you you have something that, that you have something that's some sort of a drive that you don't let stop you robbie right it's something that just it's a gut instinct it's something that tells you this is what you fucking have to do and you don't have a choice and you do it Look, I I went through rock and roll in the 80s and 90s. Um, everybody knows I was not a saint. You know, I lived with the biggest drug addict in rock and roll. Um, I Seven years, I was literally fucked up every single goddamn day. And I woke up one day and I said, I can't do this, I'm going to die. And yeah. something, something said that to me, you got to get out of this. And then something made me go right back to what I truly love, which is animals and sharing my passion with people, teaching people about what I learned. And that's, that's what, you know, I, shit, I was with Sam Kinison the night he died. I was with, I had a bunch of my friends who OD'd. Bunch of them who died in car accidents. Bunch of them who, you know, I hung out with all the rock stars. I hung out with those guys. I lived in a damn mansion in Beverly Hills. <laughs> you know, it's, but something told me, look, dude, you got to leave. You're going to die. You're not meant to die this way. Yeah. And I just, all I ever do now is try to improve the world I live in. I try to leave my mark, and I try to leave, so when I do finally leave, I, hopefully someone will carry on what I try to do. Yeah. yeah. I do so much stuff pro bono, it's ridiculous. We did the Castaways Against Cancer. We did all kinds of stuff, all these school events. If a school can't afford us, we go and do it for free, and it's, it's just what you do, dude. Yeah, much respect on that. That's awesome, bro. You know, it's 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 love. I love people and I love animals, and I get screwed over by people a lot. But you can't stop loving people because I I don't know how to say it, dude. It's it's just something you feel. But Robbie, can yeah. I ask you a question, Robbie? Shoot. Sure. As much as you love people, how do you deal with backstabbers? You you go you go on, dude. You go on. But if, you know if what? People, if these people keep wanting to be a part of your life, day and you know, like over and over, and you know that they're continuously trying to fuck you over, how do you deal with that? You just walk away from them, put them out of your life. I, I just went through that with a couple cases, you know, and um, I won't mention names because I won't give them the time of day to bring up their names. But everybody knows who it is, and it's I will never I'm, I won't speak their name, but I just don't deal with them. It's they're not worth it to me, 
it's you know it's easier to smile and laugh and love than it is to frown and hate and just eliminate those people from your life and see who else who you can inspire in a positive way yeah i I hear you i think be more in control of the audience the ones who are more thriving off positivity versus negativity right right i mean it's funny because like i do my lives at night and i do it just for the people who join in and people are like why don't you post them and share them? And I, I don't, I don't post them and share them because it's a little thing I, I like doing during the week, and that way whoever's on gets to see what happens. We go check all the crocodiles. I'll go in the water with you, but I get in the water with the Niles, or I'll do something stupid, and you know, sit there and interact with people. And you'll every once in a while you'll get this hater on there that starts talking shit and. I got 28 people attacking him. I don't even have to say a word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, let you let the love for you speak for it. You know, and dude, look at me. I I got caught up in this whole Rob Roy thing and didn't even have anything to do with it. And yeah. all because I'm a swamp brother. And <laughs> it was like fuck it. It's part of life. I guess that's what God had in plan for me, you know, and who knows what it is, what else it is, who knows what life holds, we'll find out, and that's the one thing I've, I've learned, is, dude, I've been the lowest of low, hold on a sec, I've been to the lowest of low to the highest of the high, and I like the middle ground. It's a lot of fun. Neutral. Yeah, I love the middle ground because it's a lot of fun, dude. It's a lot of fun. Staying off radars is key. Yeah, to being on radar is cool. It's too because you know you you reach more people. But right. you well, know, I, I learned people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks and. Trust me, I've done stupid things in my life, just like everybody else has, and I have no problem admitting it. You know, that's the difference. True words, never been spoken like this before. I'm telling you right now, this is 100% life facts. What uh, Robbie's saying. You got, you got to find a, you got to find a middle ground that makes you happy too. You know what I mean? That's what it's all. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's dude. I am. I love just giving, 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 and doing stuff. I love that. That is so, so much fun. It makes me feel good, you know? So <laughs> that's what I keep trying to do. I try to feel good, and that's, how, that's my, my drug anymore, you know? It's, shit, I, I don't even barely drink anymore, dude. I, don't, I drink one night a week. I have two drinks on Saturday night. Dude, drink me shit. I, 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 I'm, I'm like starting to not enjoy drinking the more I start to drink now. It's crazy. I don't know if it's my age or if my fucking body is just rejecting it. I used to fucking drink like a fish underwater through my whole 20s. So maybe no, that's dude. I just feel like shit now. During my podcast, I'm, I'm not drinking tonight. Go figure. But I usually drink during the podcast. And the next day or the, even that night, I feel like fucking complete trash. Right. Right, it's it's not even that. I used to get so wasted at the NARBC auctions. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! I like doing that. Those are fun. <laughs> you know, it's I I'd be sitting at a table with Todd and uh, all those guys, and we'd kill seven, eight bottles. And Todd and I would sit there and from Timberline would be the last ones to leave six o'clock in the morning we're headed back up to the hotel room and you gotta be you know and it was crazy days but i remember one time we were at the chicago show and there was a wedding next door and it was while swamp brothers was on tv and the bride's father came over and asked i was outside smoking a cigarette and he saw steven and i out there and he goes 
excuse me, can I, do you mind if I ask you guys for a favor? They're like, no, whatever, whatever, what do, what do you need? He goes, can you get in a photo with the wedding party for us? <laughs> Iconic. So I went over there and I picked up the bride and I'm holding her next to the groom. Yeah. And she's laying across my arms. You got invited to start the wedding. Yeah, it was crazy. And then they invited us in. They were like, you guys want food? You want drinks? And we're like, no, we got all the drinks and food we got we need yeah. next door. You can waste it as is. Yeah. But there was so many times. I remember um, we were in California at the NARBC show. And we're doing shots of tequila down in the hotel. Yeah. And everyone's bugging Steven. Come on, take a last shot. Take one more shot, one more shot. And Steven's so drunk. He takes the shot glass, goes like this, and tilts it up. And it goes down his throat. And then he just falls straight back. Damn. And uh, he hit the ground and was out cold. And people were grabbing their cell phones to take pictures. And you had um, the couple of the guys from Timberline go, anybody takes a fucking picture, I'll kick their ass and throw your phone in the pool. <laughs> and you saw everybody put their phones away. And uh, they carried Steven up to the room. And they put him in bed. And then I stayed down there drinking with Todd and everybody. And then when I'm going up to the room, I go put my card key in. It unlocks, but the door won't open. I'm like, what the fuck? So I put my shoulder into it, and Steven got up to pee, but then he was going back to the bed. He laid down right in front of the door. <laughs> and he's on carpeting, and I'm pushing so hard. I'm pushing him across the carpet. He had a big old carpet burn on his cheek the next morning. Oh, jeez, dude. <laughs> He's like, dude, what the hell happened? Uh, and I go, you passed out in front of the door, dude. I had to get in. <laughs> he goes, you're such an asshole. <laughs> I was like, me? You? <laughs> and... Dude, it's life's fun, man. Live it and enjoy it. Just, I mean, it, it's all how careful. you perceive. It. It's really how you perceive it, bro. Life, life could, life is, life should be nothing but fun. I mean, that's why we have all the tools in the world to make life fun. It's just how people want to fucking. It's, it's a mindset, really. Dude, you know, you know what I hate is when someone has a bad day and they're like, "Oh man, my day's ruined. This happened." I'm like, seriously, dude. Shut the fuck up. Just, okay, that happened. Now go look, go find something positive. Yeah, for real. Or, or even if even if the thing is nowadays, if your day is just full of fucking shit, which that happens too, you can't find anything positive, dude, tomorrow's a new day, man. Like, it's, yeah. I, I, I just wait sometimes when my day is just so bad, I just go, you know what? I'm fucking, I'm Xing out today. Today is a fucking non factor. I'm right. Going, today never <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. It's a, even though that fucking animal is dead, it's a non-factor. You right. Pick, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just, you just got to pick it up and keep it moving. Like, especially when you work with fucking living things. Like, dude, it's after so long, so while things aren't always going to be thriving. It just, you fucking, you just, you take, you take the waves as they come. They come, they go. They come and go. It's just how life is. You do, you do the best you can. And yeah. at least you'll always know you did the best. Yeah. And... There's there's that overcome and adapt statement. I forgot what it was, but you overcome, you adapt. You just, it's about fucking adapting to the change that comes into your life because it's things are, things are going to change no matter what. Um, right. And you know, it's what the fuck you going to do about it. It's life. You can't do shit about it. Nothing, nothing you can do, but adapt to it. Right. Right. And that's, that's, Sorry. dude, it's, we're here for a short time. Very Enjoy short. it. Enjoy it while you're here. Fucking write it out while you're here. <laughs> fucking rock yeah. it out while you're here, dude. Balls to the that's wall. It, dude. I'm telling you right now. I, that's, you know, I, I, sorry, Des. I know we keep talking about force, but fuck, that guy just fucking wrote the goddamn wall, that guy. That guy was fucking gnarly. He just, he just fucking did, you know, he was just fucking, just, he, he <laughs> uh, there, there will never be another Forrest Fanning. Let's just leave it at that. No, no there no, never will, and never nor will. should there ever be. <laughs> No. <laughs> Steven, uh, Steven's face. Oh, let's, unless we could clone Steven, which we can't. Oh, God. 
<laughs> Some oh. and others that I'm like, no, not gonna happen. What does speak up? We can't hear you. What? I said they have some similarities. Oh, yeah. Even in forests? Yeah, they do. They're both forgetful of shit. And, uh... oh, dude. Yeah, everybody that works here is like, well, I gave my paper to Steven. Well, I told Steven. Well, da -da -da. I'm like, he's like Forrest was. Like, you can't do that. Yeah, like, he passed the right. you got to give me the paperwork. you got to yeah. gotta tell me, like, you know. Right, right. Uh, right. Steven's not operation. Service he's, replies are like identical. Like I'll have Steven reply sometimes, and I'm like, dude, this sounds just like for it's like oh, the, yeah, the game they would fit. Just the game they would both fit. My favorite responding to pissed off customers is like talk, <laughs> I'm too mean. perfect grammar, like <laughs> you know, vocabulary and just talk down to them. In I'll the talk to you to way condescending short. way. Just yeah, fuck Bob Smith. <laughs> Des, it, it's funny, Des, because remember how pissed off Forrest and Cody were at each other a little while ago? Yeah. And Forrest would, he called me one night, it was like 1130 at night, 12 o'clock, and he goes, I didn't wake you up, did I? am like, no, what? And he goes, fucking Cody, fucking Cody did this, and I'm like... Dude, you guys fight all the time. Yeah. And then you kiss and make up. Yeah. And you guys fought over green tree pythons before. You fought over this before. You fought because you had a kid. You fought because this, because of that. You you called me. Then that night he called up bitching and he go, and about Cody did a post about how nobody should be having children nowadays. And he was going off on that. Who the fuck does he think he is to tell people if they should have a kid or not? And I'm like, dude, do you think anything's anybody's really listening to Cody? Well, no. I go, okay, then why are you mad? All right, good night. <laughs> That's all it was. All right, good night. I was so like forced when it came to responding to shit like that because um, one of my one of it's kind of similar to something I went through. My buddy, I invited my buddy to my wedding, and then like a few months went by, and then I hit him up. I'm like, "Hey man, are you still going to my wedding?" And he's like, "Well, do you think you guys are still going to get married?" And I'm like, "What? Like, why the fuck would you say that? Like, of course we get married." You know, he's like, "I don't know, man. You're kind of wild, you know. I just figured I asked." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Fucking dick that thing that he was like, Yeah, we're gonna get married. He's like, I'm just making sure. And I'm like, What? That fucking pissed me off. I was like, Go fuck yourself. And I didn't want him to go after that. He still went, but it was just, just like, I know, you know, that's how that's how Forrest and Cody were, dude. They would fight over the stupidest stuff, and sometimes it was legit stuff, and sometimes it was just so stupid. And you'd have to sit there and go, Wait a minute. Am I hearing this right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really was. It was like a married couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how much he loved his friends, though, man. That's just how it yeah. was. That's a, truly, dude. I posted uh, on my story. It's I've you know I lost two good friends this year, uh, Forrest and uh, Morgan, and. Um, Go look at my stories where I save them. Highlights. And you'll my highlights, and you'll see Forrest there with the king cobra. Look at the smile on his face when I let him hold that king. Yeah. You know, that's when I look at that picture, I don't even see the king. I just see that smile, dude. He was, he goes, Can I hold it? And he was waiting for me to say no. I go, Yeah, come here. And he, dude, it was like, a little kid he just lit up and he's like all right show me how <laughs> and i was showing him and uh he, he after he did it he was like oh my god thank you so much oh my god thank you thank you <laughs> and i'm like dude you've held him before he goes yeah but dude i always wanted to ask you to do that before show me how to freehand stuff and you never would and so yeah this is where he got it from <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Uh, no, he got it when he went with Brian, and they fucking were holding that king over there. Indo? Yeah, in Indo. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, that's where I got that shit from. But he used to always ask me to freehand, teach him how to freehand, and I always say no. We were cleaning all those little baby coral cobras you had, and he was taking dry bites all the time. <laughs> He's freehandling them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And the, the stuff they used to do in the hot room when I wasn't there was ridiculous. Yep. I've heard the stories. <laughs> <laughs> Rich forest my and is we'd feed them like eight small rats at a time and we'd just open the cage, just throw them in there one at a time and then just shoot out. So scary. Yep. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. I don't wanna know guys. I don't wanna know. Go in there with the face mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Scary. <laughs> The hey, shit Robbie. was so stupid. Hey, Robbie, man, this has been an what? epic no, podcast, bro. This is uh, we just cleared it out on our own. You still there? Wait, you want to just yeah, me? yeah, I'm here. I want to just uh, want just want to thank you for your time, man. This has been a fucking amazing time, Robbie. I just, I, I we do have a lot of people in here who are just kind of getting into the start of it of, of keeping in the hobby and whatnot. What's your what's your message to the the, the newcomers or even the youth out there? That want to make this a part of their life, and you know who knows where it could take them, but just something that they want to keep driving. What, what's what's a message you have for them, dude? Is if you do want to do this, and this is truly your passion, I mean, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, but learn about it as much as you can, and not from one person. Learn, read everything you can about it. That's why I love, love for it. Read everything you can about it, and talk to everyone about it. Because, like I said in the very beginning, what works for someone might not work for you. And you just got to figure it out, you know, what everyone else has discovered is a baseline. Mm -hmm. And who knows, you might be wanting to discover something later on. And just yeah. keep an open mind. And there's, there's, remember, there's no, there's too much hate in this world. There's no room for more of it. I mean, just try to just be the best person you can. Day by day. And that's that's the way to do it, dude. And enjoy it. Don't you know, don't don't think you're gonna become a millionaire breeding ball pythons because <laughs> as Brian and Kevin, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not how the fucking it's not how it works, dude. Not even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I remember always that I used to threaten bar check and say, listen. Fuck you and your ball python money. There you go, dude. I'm doing good, and I, I'd be going, "Oh yeah, I'll get into the hobby and crash the fucking business." You watch, it'll crash the week after I get into it. What a dick! <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, you fucking asshole!" And I, I love Brian. Brian's great, dude. We used to do the Ohio show years and years and years ago together. You guys go way back. Yeah. And I mean, dude, it's Brian. This Kevin's a great guy. I love Kevin. Um, Brian is just Brian's like a brother to me, like Forrest was, and it's uh, just be kind, man. There's no room to hate on people. You know, learn as much as you can about it. And if someone tells you different, okay, that may be what worked for them. So it was different. Mm -hmm. You know, don't argue about it. Don't pick a fight over it. Just move on and do what works for you. I'm on this big anti-fucking, you know, hate thing in my part of my life. And you, I see man. too much... Too much fucking people hating, and it's it's ugly. And you know, there's it's even ugly. you know, there's not only hate that's visual out there, but there's people who hate on their you know behind the scenes, and it, it's just not it's not good to be like that. Period. Like it's also like you know, obviously don't put out hate out there, but also don't fucking dwell on the hate on yourself. You know what I mean? Like I don't right, right. 
I don't ever get jealous, jealous. Like there's things I want to do in life, but I'm never jealousy is never really a factor in my life because I know I could take my life wherever I want to go. Like I'm fucking, I'm so confident in, in my, in my life right now that I could take it wherever I want to go. So I don't fucking, there's no jealousy of anything that, that I put into my fucking life. It's, it's, it's jealousy is a disease to me. I don't, I don't believe in it. Well, hundred percent. It's a disease and it's, you know, we're all, God gave us all a brain. And it is such a remarkable tool and use it, use it, you know, don't hate on people. Use figure out, don't be jealous. Don't figure out what you want to do and do it. Yep. Go for it. You know, don't, don't give up because you're told, Oh, you'll never do that. Those are just haters talking. Right. Those are the haters. Bro. Especially if you have no missing hands, there's no missing limbs. You got fucking hands. If you have fucking hands, there should be no reason why you're not fucking hustling your fucking ass off. Anything yep. happens if you have fucking hands. All it takes is fucking hands nowadays, dude. It's nuts. Yeah. Dude, what does it? I'm just saying. Shit. Like, you know, it makes shit happen. Build look at, look at, look at Stephen. He's got two hands. He's always at the truck stop giving hands. Wow. <laughs> Probably, probably want, that's probably why he wants to sign off early tonight. <laughs> yeah, right? Look at him. He's like, come on, guys. I just uh, It's Friday night. I got to get to the truck stop. I got, I got appointment. I got appointment. I got Steven, I got look, I got look, at look at Steve. Look at the hair. It's looking pretty good, buddy. It's getting long and looking pretty sexy there. <laughs> Thanks, bub. You can't get <laughs> hey, Stephen, why are you turning red? He's been red the whole I, episode. I, is, I didn't expect this to happen on the live, so I'm just... Yeah, he has. He did. He did. <laughs> oh, God. You guys, see, that's, this is it, though. This is what life is about. It's about having fun. It's about, you know, you just got to cut loose once in a while and just have, have fun. And not taking, you know, and not taking so fucking serious, man. Don't stop taking yeah. serious. Force to say it all the time. Exa yeah, you quit being so serious. There's times to be serious, you know, when you're you're doing stuff, and there's times to just let loose and let go of some of that built up frustration, dude. And life's way too short, and. We keep coming back to that, that dude. It, it's so true. Yep. We're here for a quick time. Super quick. So make it count. Make it fucking count. Yeah. Robbie fucking keys. Damn man. You're, you're the fucking man, Robbie. I appreciate you so much for giving us your two hours tonight, man. You're uh, you're something special for sure. And the, the hobby is good to have you, bro. Dude, I, I love you guys, man. And guys, I, I love you to death. And give Lars a hug and a kiss for me. Steven, I love you too, buddy. And uh, Steven, that, you know, I know I don't text you enough. And just thank you for holding Des together and all that up there. Because you're her rock right now. And she needs yeah. you. And Steven's killing it. Thank him. you so much. Sure. You know, you're doing, you're doing an incredible job, brother. And I know I'm proud of you, and I know Forrest is definitely proud of you. Hella, hella. And I love you, man. I love you. And Des, I love you. And dude, guys, this, this is just—it's—it's it's been a fun. It's been a blast, but. Listen, I gotta get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Robbie, I love you too. Okay. All right, take care, bro. Love you. Be good. And you guys just spread some love, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What are you doing over there, Jake? <laughs> He's gonna. All right, Robbie. We'll talk to you later, man. Have a good night. Bye, Robbie. All right, brother. Take care. Bye. Well, wildest fucking uh, guest we've had for sure, hands down. Ooh. I thought Dave Levison was gonna be that be the cake taker for a while, and then Robbie came and started showing his nipples and fucking 
Woo! Right off the bat, man. That shit was fucking wild. Jesus. W- waited until he got off the show to tell everyone about the story of uh, when he when he uh, groped uh, the back part of me last time I was there. But, <laughs> you know. But yeah. I'm the one at the show. So. <laughs> we're, we're fucking shooting darts into each other, bro. Like, think. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Last, like, last, last time I went down there on the drive down, he's calling me. He's like, He's like, I got those poison darts ready for you when you get here, and you're you're going in the Cuban fucking pen. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I hope that's not true. It's kind of my thought. It's like that could happen. So He's a, see, I'm like, because how accident prone I am and the injuries I've had. Like Robbie, if you like leave me alone with Robbie, something bad's gonna happen. Like, because I, I would, I'm gonna be that idiot to be like, really? Should I? And he's probably gonna be like, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. And then I'm gonna yeah. be missing him or some shit or fucking really yeah. gonna be pissed. Um, mm-hmm. Fuck, dude, it was awesome. I loved hearing the stories about Forrest and Desiree and the big, you know, the how you guys worked with them for the two years and and whatnot. Desiree, that you definitely got some fucking experience under your belt, girl, doing the shit that he was having you do and whatnot. And you're working with the Venomous, right? Yeah. Like is that is that when it all start? Is that when, is that when it all started for you? Like, is that when your your experience on yeah. building was right there with Robbie? Yeah, I mean, Forrest had some snakes here and there, and, like, we had, like, a hundred lot of baby ball pythons for a minute and, like, 30 adult breeders, but um, didn't really, like, we moved all that with us when we got to Florida. That was, but I was always in school, and during this time, I was in between school, so I really got, like, that's where I learned everything, crocs and the venomous stuff monkeys um, tortoises all of it like we cut vegetables every day went to the grocery like the store zoo, like literally living a zoo life mm-hmm. yeah like doing the shit they do at the zoos basically yeah. day in day out and you did that for two years yeah and we, that we didn't get paid like that yeah just no, did yeah that yeah i mean because i mean the experience is your pay basically you yeah. fucking I, mm-hmm. honestly i could you know, there's, I feel like, you know, internships and stuff are, are, I feel like that's important for a lot of people to do in any career they do. They should be willing to fucking just work for like work just for the fuck of it. But you cannot get me to do that with anything but reptiles. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. If, if you're, you're not going to, you got to have that like first volunteer. Dude, ship yeah. or like, and you know, I would do it another way. You're just doing it wrong. Honestly. Yeah, like I fucking day, would. Do this all we did was clean water bowls. Like he made us clean every fucking water bowl on it's, that full farm. It's just frustrating because it's, it's close to the so it would kill any bacteria. Like, he was crazy. Like, 100%. I've already told Steven this. If I lived any closer to you guys or close to you guys, I would I would be, you know, especially right now, I'd be at that fucking farm every day helping out. And not one dime would I expect except for maybe a couple compliments from Steven here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the guys we'll, around here, man. That doesn't happen a lot. No. Well, fuck. <laughs> I, that's what happened. It's me. I'm Tim J. Come on. It's me, dude. Oh. I'm a Leo. Hey, come on. Oh. <laughs> um we're in a great good session guys man um it's tomorrow i'm really looking forward to tomorrow i could tell you right now um mm-hmm. I, I, look I, I think we i don't know what episode it was but i remember oh it was steven's episode so the cushington episode we did i think it was episode eight um steven was really adamant about a gentleman onto the show by the name of bill brandt um and I was like, what? I was kind of surprised because I figured, you know, was as as Stephen going to say Ed Marino? Is he going to fucking drop like a, a co- common name? I thought he would know, but he dropped a name by the name of Bill Brandt. And I do recall the name being brought up from Forrest, Gourmet Rodents, you know what I mean? And, and it, it did ring a bell. And then I had the luxury of talking to Bill for about an hour. And holy fucking shit. I cannot tell you how, how excited I am to have this guy come on the show tomorrow so we're this is the back to back we're doing back to back this week so tomorrow we're gonna have fucking bill brandt hop on um and be fucking jesus man the knowledge that this guy dropped first off um let me just fucking show you so this is bill brandt i don't know i think it's sometime in the seven, six, years, old. seven years old in this picture right here seven, this guy's seven. been doing He's been in herp. He's been he's been a herper. He's been herping since he was seven years old. Okay, um, and not just as, he's been a part of the herp herp herpetology community and like just fucking all this important stuff that it that it, that's something important for us. So like we're the new generation. We're the younger generation. Bill's fucking legends of legends, and he's basically passing down information that is so important for us to know 
but it's expected for us to pass this down to our generation. So it's going to be very important to be a fucking very crucial um, podcast with Bill Brandt. I am so excited, guys. Thank yeah. you for uh, thank you for plugging this up. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> so if anybody's fucking listen if it's one thing that Forrest left when he left in me when he took off is the history of this shit i'm very into the past of what this shit was like and Forrest was a fucking book nerd with all this stuff he loved this shit he loved researching and bill brant was somebody he had, when it comes to business models and business mindsets bill brant was the man Forrest looked up he to the most I'm telling you. he st- dude it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So please tap in. Um, uh, guys, real, we uh, we got shirts going out. They're going out in stages, okay? Not not. I have not sent every single one of these shirts out, okay? So you need to understand if you're not got your shirt yet, don't trip. I'm working down a list, and we're going to get these out to you, okay? So And we do have more of these, so make sure you reach out and let us know um, if we can help you with these or with the Zoo, uh, Zoo Dream Supreme Edition um, that we got rocking on as well. Uh, shout out to Steven for the idea. This is this is we're gonna give Steven Cush the uh, kudos on this one. So, oh, it was Brendan's idea. No, he had the idea that was unfortunately not uh not able to be created. Uh, uh we left in in the. Cush, how are your scrub eggs? They look they look fine still. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Exactly. Are we week one yet, or where are we at right now with that? Something like that. I think like day eight, maybe. Day, yeah, I think it was like last Thursday. So. And how many how many minutes in total? I know you know the minutes. Do you fuck it? I, I would I would drive myself crazy. I'd be like looking at my phone. Like, if I don't look at my phone enough already, I'll be looking at it twice as much to just check the time constantly. So, yeah, when, I'm trying when, to get at least anything done here. You know. When are you gonna offer the female meal again? I already did. She didn't. Didn't you know? She didn't take. So I'm just playing it by it's ear. Fresh. Yeah. I well, at least she got all the eggs out of her, bro. That's a huge success, I think. Yep, Even, like, God forbid, you know, if it, none of those fucking eggs made it, I just feel like the female was able to get that far and get those out. That's like a, whew, that's a huge relief, dude. Yeah. But you got some nice, healthy fucking eggs. Eleven, to be exact, right? Yeah. I, I, you called me that night. I'm like, I think there's ten. You're like, there's eleven. There's eleven. I'm like, oh, I fucking take it, and there was eleven. So hey, because I need that. Steven's holding back ten. <laughs> I just like, dude. I just he says anything after ten, he we can consider. Want, he wants to pull them all back. Uh, uh, yeah, they're gonna be here for at least like six months. Well, we'll we'll, we'll oh, see. Oh, for where sure. We're no at. rush. I'm in no rush. Don't worry about it. We're in no rush. We're good. Um, hey right, guys, shout out to everybody <laughs> in the comments. Shout out to everybody, uh, you know, who, who tunes in, who watches, and all every, especially everybody out on the, the Buzz Buzz Sprout and the Spotify, all the podcast platforms. We have a huge, huge following on that. We get a lot of listeners and whatnot. So, it's to you guys out there who listen on the, you know, the podcast platforms, thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Uh, we're gonna keep the ball rolling. Tomorrow, it's gonna be three thirty, right? Three thirty. Eastern, Eastern Standard, 1230 yeah. Pacific Standard. Got pushed a half, half hour late for these two. Anything for these two. So we'll Aww. be all right. Yeah, but yeah. Do you guys have anything before we dip out? <clears throat> um, nothing more, man. Just uh, amazing episode. It was really great having Rob be on. He just brings a new, you know, a different kind of energy yeah. than a yeah. lot of other people have. You know, they're, they're, he, he he's one of a kind. You know, you're not going to find another Robbie out yeah. there. And he's. Yeah, he's an awesome dude. And uh, definitely don't miss tomorrow. That's going to be for anybody who is looking at this hobby from a business perspective, especially younger people. You don't yeah. like you do not miss this. Where's like Bobby? this is yeah. this is it. You're not going to get better information that we're going to hear on your tomorrow. So do not miss it. It's just somebody like, listen, if, if you hear the name Bill Brandt and you're like, who the fuck? I'm telling you, this is somebody who the fuck you just going to want to hear and listen to because – of reptiles essentially yeah. so calling this guy was the best thing i've ever done for this podcast and getting that one-on-one with him because he just put me on game with so much shit and i don't like to interview anybody i don't really know about that's stupid i just feel like that what's you should really at least have an i have an idea who you're bringing on so you can kind of share that passion and boy i fucking after i got the phone with bill i immediately text desiree and steven and i'm like dude i am fucking so stoked like yeah. so yeah i'm, I'm yeah. dead serious that's serious i'm not 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to Brian Cusco thumbnail you guys right now. I'm being dead ass serious. I am stoked as fuck. Okay. That wasn't funny. No, I didn't get not one laugh from that. <laughs> oh, this guy. This guy. Oh, I'm out. You guys are rude. I'm out. Bye, guys. <laughs>